physical model experiments on floating offshore wind turbines. The other co-authors, which will follow me in this presentation, are Felice D'Alessandro and Elena Muschi. The presentation tries to summarize the preliminary conclusions and results from a research project, Dynamic Response of Floating Offshore Wind Turbines Under Wind and Wave Action. Um, we have, in this group, we had different backgrounds because the topic is multidisciplinary. So we had uh, people from uh, the School of Naval Architecture and Marine Engineering, like Spiros Maguaracos, and then Nuno Fonseca from Lisbon, who is uh, an expert of aerodynamics, and then Valery Pencher from Bulgaria, who is uh, an expert for laboratory experiments, and then Olga Strunk from uh, Germany, who is an expert in wave structure interaction. We had uh, so uh, different sites in Europe in the spirit of the Hydralab uh, projects, which is to allow young, enthusiastic scientists to work in a nice international atmosphere with experienced colleagues. This is the basic of knowledge transfer. We made the model test at the offshore wave basin at DHI, Danish Hydraulic Institute in uh, Denmark. It's a well-known um, uh, basin, uh, which is now under renovation higher. And uh, they, DHI also provided this video, which you can find uh, in uh, YouTube, that will be the director of this movie is uh, Jens Kierkegaard. <laughs> who is also actor. That's not me. Unfortunately, the sound is not present. As I say, this is available in YouTube, so you can go to visit this uh, and find this uh, video. This uh, video is referring to the Sparboy model test. And uh, you can see the spheres to follow the movements during the entire test of the structure. And we can skip this, otherwise we... Okay, so finish. The presentation, so a short introduction, then I will describe the model test design, then the physical model test setup will be given by Felice, the visual observation and preliminary results, the preliminary conclusions. The introduction, the wind energy capacity in the last year increased of about 40,000 megawatts in the world. So we have now close to 4% of the global electricity demand from the wind power, uh, wind energy uh, conversion. And about 100 countries are today using wind power on commercial basis. Spain, I heard that, is now having 20% of its demand from the wind energy. But there are some problems. The environmentalists claim that there is a strong visual impact and uh, also an influence on bird life, causing some fatalities. And uh, moreover, there is some noise, so you cannot have uh, your personal house close to a structure of this type. So there is uh, an interest for deep water, because also there is a, a wind blowing faster and a more reliable wind. And also for the same height, you can obtain larger wind speeds. And uh, so the capacity of conversion of these wind turbines is higher at uh, offshore deep uh, waters. There are two typical uh, wind, wind turbine uh, offshore um, floating wind turbines. The Sparboy type, which we will call SB, which has a configuration using ballast to lower the center of gravity below the center of buoyancy, and it is moved either by catenaries or by tautlines. 
The second type is the tension leg platform, TLP, which uses, again, mooring lines, but which stay in tension due to the excess buoyancy provided by the hollow platform or floater. The research project was divided in two phases. The first phase was, uh, maybe the strongest, was to establish a procedure for the design and the setup of the experiments. We had several meetings at DHI to design the experiments. And then the phase two was to obtain these results, compare two main floating offshore wind turbine typologies, investigate on natural frequency of the structure, then perform the physical model experiments in order to investigate on the amplitude of motion of the floating body under different meteor conditions, including the forces, the vibrations, and so on, the accelerations. Observe the influence of the mooring system in the response of the floating body, and then create a reliable and accurate database for numerical modeling, calibration, and verification. We should say that main, uh, mainly the uh, data set from this model test, not this particularly, but in general, uh, concerning this type of structures, are confidential. So the, the, the use of this data is not allowed to uh, people not in the company paying for this uh, model test. So in this case, we have a, a free access data set for the community. We used, as I said, the wave basin at DHI, and uh, it's a well-known uh, wave basin, 20 meters long, 30 meters wide, with a, a water depth of 3 meters and a pit in the center of 5 meters water depth. Uh, the wave basin is equipped with 60 individual control flaps capable of generating regular and regular waves. Of course, reflection <coughs> is uh, absorbed and other things that are well-known. The TLP case. We made reference to a prototype which is called the MIT and REL type. Uh, it's um, a platform moved by four pairs of vertical lines in tension. Uh, the draft of the structure is about 48 meters and uh, mm, the line extensional stiffness has a huge value. This is the model in the basin. Uh, we adopted a 1 to 40 scale factor. The floater was made of plastic material with mass density 1,200 kilograms per cubic meter. Uh, the floater was composed, and the tower was composed, the structure was composed by three parts. The main cylinder with a length of about 1.2 meters with the outer diameter of 0 0.45 meters, and at the top of the floater, a removable cover has been placed in order to put the ballast and adjust it, and also to put some pressure sensors inside. The cover has been linked to a smaller cylinder, uh, three, 300 millimeters long, with an outer diameter of about 162 millimeters. At the top of the smaller cylinder, a six-component force gauge has been mounted, and above this, the tower has been installed. The mooring system. The mooring line system consisted of four tension legs made of aluminium. Uh, it was fixed to an internal mast, internal to the floater, and uh, the ropes at the lower end, with the, which has been anchored to the bottom of the pit, and the top end has been attached the two springs to the and then to the uh, leg. Then we had to determine the characteristics of the line of the rope. So we consider the equivalent extension and stiffness of the prototype, and uh, we use this value to determine based on the characteristics of the adopted. Uh, uh, rope in the model, the, and the length of the rope meters, with a weight of 54 grams for, per meter, and minimum breaking load of 3,600 3, decanewtons, and an equivalent extension of stiffness corresponding to the prototype of 40 newton per millimeters. We had to pretension the rope 
uh, and then we consider a 12.4 kilogram for uh, each rope. Then the spar buoy. We made reference to the OC3 high wind prototype, which is a <coughs> spar buoy um, wind turbine which has been displaced offshore Norway by the company Stator Hydro. And uh, the draft of this structure was, is in prototype is 120 meters and uh, it is displaced uh, in a water depth of 340 meters. These are pictures from the model. The same scale model was adopted, 1 to 40, and the plastic material was a with a mass density of 1,200 uh, kilograms per meter. In this picture, actually, you can see also the collar and then the springs and the ropes to the bottom. Um, in this case also, we had uh, three main parts to compose the floater. An upper cylinder corresponding to the smaller cylind vertical cylinder adopted in the TLP model, 300, 300 millimeters long and having an outer diameter of 162.5 millimeters. Below this, a 200 uh, millimeters long structure made up of a vertical cone shape becoming wider up to a diameter of 235 millimeters. And then the lower part, the remaining 2.6 meters, have been constructed as a main cylinder with a constant diameter. So this is the floater entirely. The mooring system for the spar buoy. The uh, full scale water depth we consider due to the limitations of the pit was 240 meters. And uh, so we had to truncate the ropes and uh, the analysis for uh, to uh, individuate the truncation point was made by Mavrakos with the is code called state mode. And so he could find the equilibrium position and the corresponding horizontal force component at the upper end um, of the rope. And so the mooring system consisted of three mooring lines directly connected to the main cylinder using the collar I showed you before. And uh, the angle between the two adjacent mooring lines was 120. Um, the rope had a diameter of 1.7 millimeter. This is the ballasting setup. The, for the TLP case, the um, uh, floater was vacuum, and so we could uh, insert the uh, correct um, weight in ballast made of uh, bars and spheres. The tower and the rotor. The uh, design and instrumentation of tower, rotor, and blades was the same for the TLP and the spar buoy. Uh, the tower was a slender plastic cylinder and had an outer diameter of 80 millimeters, a length of 161 centimeters. A motor inside the electrical motor inside the casing could keep constant the rotation at a speed of 34, 38 round per minute, which correspond to a rotational speed of 12.1 round per minute at the full scale, accounting for the gyroscopic effect. Then the wind load. We consider only the thrust, from the, thrust force from the wind, and uh, based on some calculation made for the high wind by Sclavonos et al. in 2008, uh, we consider a, um, a thrust force of 800 kilonewtons. In the model scale, this is 10 newtons. But with the pitch of the blades equal to 30 degrees, we could observe a thrust equal to 3 newtons. So we had to add a, seven, a weight of 7 newtons. And it was made uh, by considering a weightless line connected to the nacelle, passing through a pulley, and with a suspended mass of 7, seven newtons. Then the blades. The blades have been scaled considering the real design from a, a, a Danish company for their blades. 
and so the weight and the geometry is very close to the um, prototype cases. Other instruments, a quality track system has been considered, has been used, uh, which uh, uh, allowed to follow the six degrees of freedom of the structure, then six force gauge um, uh, measure was installed at the base of the tower, one four components force gauge was installed at the base of the nacelle, and then we had three accelerometers. Um, two were at the uh, nacelle uh, base and one at the bottom of the tower. And then Thanks to <coughs> Professor Tomasicchio for the first uh, part of the presentation. I'm going to present physical model test setup and uh, <coughs> visual observation and preliminary results. The model test considered three meter conditions, no rotation, normal operational and extreme. At first, the dynamic behavior of the floating structure, TLP or spar buoy, has been investigated under no wind conditions. Afterward, normal operational conditions have been simulated with combined rotation and wave agitation. And finally, extreme wave conditions have been generated with the rotor being stopped. In long crested uh, regular and uh, irregular waves have been uh, generated in the wave basin, considering uh, orthogonal and uh, oblique uh, waves direction with reference to the structure. The table summarizes the adopted meteor conditions with the, the characteristics of the regular and irregular waves in terms of wave height and wave period. In this uh, um, figure, we uh, show uh, two examples of uh, wave structure interaction for the case of TLP. On the left side, we can see the um, interaction between the propagating waves with the floating structure under no wind conditions. And on the right side, we can see the uh, interaction between the floating structure with the propagating waves under normal operational conditions with combined rotation and wave agitation. This is a um, very short video showing the behavior of the floating structure, case of TLP, under the action of uh, waves and wind. This is the case of uh, wave interaction for spar buoy. On the left side, we can see the situation with no wind conditions. And uh, on the right side, we can see the uh, interaction between the propagating waves and the floating structure under normal operational conditions. The preliminary analysis has been uh, conducted in order to compare the dynamic behavior of the two wind turbine under six selected regular wave characteristics and meteor conditions, allowing to investigate the influence of uh, the rotor movement and the uh, wave height. Based on uh, the observed data from uh, the TLP and the spiral models, it has been possible to individuate the maximum attained values of the induced horizontal force and moment components at the nacelle base, the moving line tensions, and finally the surge wave and the eave displacements and the roll pitch and yaw rotations. The table summarized the uh, selected six selected test cases with the, the um, adopted uh, meteor condition with the wave characteristics in terms of wave height and wave period. With reference to the maximum uh, values of uh, the induced horizontal force and the moment component at uh, the nacelle base, we observed that for both the TLP and Sparboy, a larger value of uh, wave height determines larger values of uh, the horizontal force. On the contrary, the moment component results not, not depending on uh, the wave height. The rotation condition determines a larger value of larger values of the uh, induced uh, horizontal forces and uh, moment, and in particular for the TLP case, uh, the rotation induces a change in the direction of the horizontal force from positive to negative, as shown 
in the table on the uh, right side. With reference to the maximum values of the moving line tensions, uh, we observed that, that for the TLP case, a large value of uh, wave height determines uh, larger values of the tension at moving lines indicated with the number uh, 1 and 3, respectively. The, in particular, the peak tension value at the moving lines uh, is uh, equal about, uh, to about 170 Newton. For the Sparboy case, uh, maximum values appear at the front line and uh, it occurs an influence of uh, rotation on uh, the maximum values of uh, the tension at moving line 1. The TLP case presents one order of magnitude larger maximum values of the tensions at the moving lines in comparison with the values measured for the SB case. Finally, with uh, uh, regard to the maximum uh, values of uh, displacement and uh, rotation for both the TLP and the Sparboy, we observed that the rotation condition determines a larger surge. And uh, in particular, for the Sparboy case, one order of magnitude larger values with respect to the no rotation have been observed. And in addition, for the Sparboy case solely, so pitch and uh, larger values are determined by the rotor movement. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I think we have to break here because we have the two other presentations, but uh, we'll see if we can... Maybe we can ask the people more. Okay. Two minutes, can we uh, take two minutes? Well, Elena. That's up to you. Okay, so um, actually it's ongoing a, a collaboration with the University of Cantabria, in particular with the IH Cantabria Institute of Environmental Hydraulic. And um, just to, uh, with the aim to uh, calibrate a numerical model um, to um, validate the uh, experimental test and to facilitate the next uh, experimental work in the field of uh, wind turbines. Um, the, um, okay, CESAM is a super element structural analysis model, is the um, software chosen for this work, is developed in uh, Norway by DNW Software, is based on the super element technique of the finite element model with a focus in the solution of the structural engineering problems for the offshore and maritime industries. And the turbine that we chosen for this study is the Sparboy type. Sesam costing on different modules used for structural analysis. And in this study, we uh, used just Geni, Hydro D, and Deep C. Geni is used for modeling structure. Uh, Hydro D is used to calculate the wave loads on structure. And Deep C is a tool for mooring and riser design, as well as marine operation offshore uh, floating structures. So important thing is that in Sesam, uh, we need to work in scale one to one. And we need to create a panel model, create a structural model. Panel model is um, used in stability and hydrodynamic analysis by hydro D, and then in coupled analysis in deep sea by creating a water surface representative of dynamic uh, hydrodynamic loads. Structural model is a complete model in which there are the spar geometrical information like thick thickness, materials, mass, center of gravity, inertia, and uh, the panel model. In, the set, um, in uh, general, we can say that um, in, um, in CETAM, we are not able to reproduce the rotation of the turbine. So uh, for this, we um, just use some plates to, uh, with the same mass and same inertia to represent the turbine and um, to represent the ballast that we can say here in the inner cylinder on the floater. The second, um, in, uh, in general, for the second step, we are talking about hydro D, and we started from the um, EVRAL pitch uh, natural frequencies uh, carried out for the, from the experimental test. And uh, so geometry and mass of Sparboy uh, model in CETAM have been corrected to iterative processes. So we can say the laboratory data and then the CETAM data. Um, the last step is deep sea for deep water installation. The riser and mooring system greatly influence the motion of the floater. The floater and standard structure constitute an integrated dynamic system responding to the environmental loading. In this step, 
Catena removing lines at the time and through the K test, then the first simulation of regular wave has been calibrated. So just to conclude, the, the tailored measure of the amplitude of the two um, turbines, uh, motion, acceleration, static, and dynamic tension at the moving line, the aerodynamic field, the wave induced pressure and tension at critical point have been carried out. It has been possible to individuate the maximum attained value of the inducted horizontal forces and moments component at the natural base. The moving line tension, the surge ray and heave displacement, and the roll pitch and the rotation. The experiment have yielded restricted detailed data freely available according to the EU Hydralab 4 rules and conditions that are totally limited to the range of the adopted experimental condition might be used to test and develop advanced numerical model. So <laughs> I still have okay. thank you for your attention. <laughs> Okay, um, thank you very much. Uh, since we went considerably over time, uh, we'll have to take the questions uh, okay. in the lobby afterwards. Okay. So, uh, thank you very much. Um,